So getting chilled quality milk in India is a big problem. Think about the last time you went to your refrigerator to get some milk for your cereal, and it smelled so rancid that you threw it down the sink, and you're looking at those white globs of milk thinking, thank God I didn't drink that. Now, what's behind that bacterial growth is uh, basically the lactose converts to lactic acid, and the lactic acid curdles the milk protein. And even after pasteurization, that, that uh, bacteria continues to divide and grow. So how do we prevent this from becoming a problem in our cereal every day? Well, it all goes back to the cows, right? It always goes back to the cows. The sooner you chill that milk, the less problems you'll have in, in your cereal because chilling stunts the bacterial growth. And in the United States, farmers have it easy. They have 24 hours of power, 365 days a year, and the milk goes right from the udder into a chiller. In India, however, it's a very different story. In India, it has such unreliable power that it's virtually impossible to chill that milk soon enough without having dangerous, bacterials, dangerous levels of bacteria in the milk. So much so that every Indian knows the first thing they do when they get that milk is to boil it. And yeah, it does take away a lot of the nutritional value that Indians depend on. So, this is a story that I'd like to share with you today about how we went about over a seven-year-long journey to try to come up with an appropriate technology to resolve this problem in India. So let me take you back to 2007. I was working in a startup in Boston, very close to MIT, and I started volunteering my time with a group of MIT engineers who were working on a really cool solar technology, which was an engine made out of car parts you see on the right that ran off of the sun's heat. And so we started making business plan competitions around electrifying villages with this solar technology. And we went for the big kahuna and we participated and won second place at the MIT 100K business plan competition. I was so excited. I was like, this is guaranteed success. Thank you. This is like guaranteed success for whatever we did, right? Luckily, I didn't know any better. So what do we do from there? Let me introduce you to one of those guys that I met at MIT, Serene Grama. He became my business partner. He grew up in Romania, immigrated to the United States when he was 16 years old, and he was getting a master's at MIT. So when we won this competition, I quit my job, Serene graduated from MIT, and we took the $10,000 of winnings and went straight to India. We were there for a month. We went from village to village, trying to see how we could find an application for this really cool solar technology. We visited villages that grew medicinal plants. Here we're hosted by the grape industry, the sugar industry, nonprofits that are putting solar on roofs and villages. And then one fine day, two weeks into that trip, we find ourselves in Bangalore. Bangalore. And a friend of a friend of a contact of a friend said, hey, you're in Bangalore, why don't you call Bangalore Dairy? Bangalore Dairy? We didn't have anything to do on that Saturday morning, and I made a call at 9.30 in the morning that would change our lives and careers forever. I called the switchboard of Bangalore Dairy, and she put me right through to the managing director of Bangalore Dairy, Mr. Sundaram, tall dairy veteran, about two years from retirement, and he wanted to see us in the next two hours. So we rushed over there, and he had 14 of his engineers to explain in excruciating detail why it's so difficult to collect raw milk from, get this, 10,000 milk-producing villages every day. The problem is they don't have enough reliable power to chill that milk. Sure, you can put a traditional milk chiller in, but if the milk arrives and there's no power with that milk chiller, you require a diesel generator. And that makes it economically unviable to run 10,000 milk chillers with diesel generators, never mind the 300,000 milk-producing villages throughout India. So, 
where did we go from that epic meeting with Bangalore Dairy? Well, we went back to Boston to try to come up with a technology that would resolve this problem. And we went through many different technologies. And every technology try, we're like, yes, we nailed it this time. Now you're going to see a bit of dose of reality of what we went through. 2000, and uh, two, this is a picture that was taken in 2008. This is how we learned um, the, the big problem in, in, in the dairy industry. This, let me introduce you to Naranjana. Naranjana is a dairy farmer who lives about three hours south of Bangalore. And she owns two cows. There are about 25 other cows, uh, <laughs> 25 other farmers who own two cows as well, maybe five cows at the most. Um, and so now I'm going to bring you uh, rural India right here into this auditorium. Here's the process. They milk the cows, the bacteria starts to grow, they bring the, the milk to the center of the village. Lately, this is my office. And then they test that milk for fat and volume in the center of the village once it's aggregated. And then they race this milk 30 kilometers away to a chilling center where they do a smell test. I mean, it's amazing what the dairy industry goes through in such difficult conditions. So, So basically, this is the whole process that they go through twice a day, because there are two milkings a day. And industry standard says that if you don't chill that milk within four hours, the bacteria kills that milk. India is averaging six hours. So now we had a meaningful problem to focus on, which was to enable them to chill the milk at the source where they're milking the cows without that bloody diesel generator. So we go back to Boston, 2008, and here's the first technology we tried. Thermoelectrics. We use solar panel to, to, to uh, make those chips cold. That didn't work. We didn't get the chips cold enough. First try. Then we tried delivering ice to these villages, and we'd use a solar panel to pump up chilled water up, uh, up this upside down martini shaker, and then when we get this really cold, we'd pour milk over it and instantly chill the milk. Think of this, but three foot high, which we call in India a Shiva. Um, that didn't work because it was a logistical nightmare. So then we got our big break in 2010. We got a purchase order from India's largest private dairy to build the very first solar-powered milk chiller, and here's how we ended up designing and building it back in Boston. Whenever we got electricity from the sun, intermittent, we would run a refrigeration cycle. That refrigeration cycle would bring down a cooling agent to below freezing. And then when the milk arrives and there's no power, we would use that car battery in the middle to pump it up the Shiva. And then we'd be able to chill the milk even without power. So. Uh, that's a 2,000 liter chiller, chilling 500 liters of milk. We ship the system to Tamil Nadu. We bring the managing director to come see our incredibly fancy technology. He takes one look at that, that cooling tower, the 2,000 liter cooling tower, and he says, that cooling tower is twice the size of any shed that you'll find in our villages. Like, what are you thinking? A year's worth of work down the drain in two minutes. I mean, just imagine three of us in the middle of the city in Talmanadu called Salem, open sewage, stinky, trying to figure out a way out of this hole. Was there anything that we had invented that, we could, that, that could salvage this thing? I mean, we had run out of money. We couldn't afford to pay our engineers anymore. We took ourselves off the salary. We were scared. And then our Indian colleague, Rajat Gupta, said to us, now hold a minute, wait a minute, this is like 4.30 in the morning now. We have two forms of intermittent power here that are very similar. One is solar, and one is the grid in India where you get about eight hours of power. You never know when, you get, when you're going to get either of those sources of power. So why don't we just get rid of solar, cut our costs in half, and create a viable product. 
Sounds easy, right? But we went through two weeks of hell, arguing back and forth. Is this really worth it if we weren't going to be a solar company? We started this company to be a solar company, not a milk chilling company. So at the end of the day, we didn't have a choice. We cut our costs in half, and we had to focus on harnessing that energy in a more efficient way. And what, by getting rid of our obsession with solar, it enables us to focus on the right thing, which is harnessing that electricity from sporadic sources. So we spent two, a year and a half trying to figure out how to get more energy in a smaller container, yet chill more milk. And so in a year and a half later, we went from a 2,000 liter cooling tank, chilling only 500 liters of milk, to a 500 liter cooling tank, chilling 1,000 liters of milk. I mean, huge gains in efficiency, right? So the managing director said to us, if you can actually chill milk for four months straight without using a diesel generator, he would give us a big order. Now keep in mind, if we did this, it would be the first time in India's history outside of Gujarat, where they have plenty of power, where they're chilling milk without a diesel generator. And I am very happy and proud to announce today that over the next month, 50 villages will be chilling at the cow. And the same, thank you. And the same managing director who rejected the solar system gave us the purchase order for, that, for those 50 chillers. So this is the ultimate uh, technology that we came up with. That blue tank is the 500 liter thermal battery. And that, that, that solar project, it was a failure, right? But we learned how to harness intermittent power from solar. The Shiva on the right side, that ice delivery thing, that was a failure. But we learned how to instantly chill milk from that failure. So this is a, a situation where we've developed a core technology where we're now building prototypes to chill fruits and vegetables, poultry, fish, um, but this time using solar. And for milk, we've created a win-win-win situation. It's a win for the environment because they're now chilling milk without destroying their pristine lands. It's a win for the dairy processors because now they're making more money from this better quality milk that they're collecting. It's a win for you guys because you're, you're, you're drinking healthier milk. But most importantly, it's a win for the farmers because their livelihoods improve. Now, I hate preaching. But I met one of your teachers today, Miss Monica. And she told me how eager you guys are to learn. So let me give you just one piece of advice from seven years of, of this hell that we went through. Go out and try new things and fail. Fail a lot. And just know that on the way to trying these new things, the failure they're just signposts to let you know that you're on the right track. And if you ever find yourself in rural India, I cordially invite each one of you to come chill with us. Thank you. <laughs>